To make use of creative thought, one must work very largely on faith, which is the chief reason why more of us do not indulge in this sort of thought. The most ignorant of the race can think in terms of deductive reasoning, in connection with matters of a purely physical and material nature, but to go a step higher and think in terms of infinite intelligence is another question. The average man is totally at sea the moment he gets beyond that which he can comprehend with the aid of his five physical senses of seeing, hearing, feeling, smelling, and tasting. Infinite intelligence works through none of these agencies, and we cannot invoke its aid through any of them. How, then, may one appropriate the power of infinite intelligence is but a natural question, and the answer is through creative thought. To make clear the exact manner in which this is done, I will now call your attention to some of the preceding lessons of this course, through which you have been prepared to understand the meaning of creative thought. In the second lesson, and to some extent in practically every other lesson that followed it, up to this one, you have observed the frequent introduction of the term autosuggestion, suggestion that you make to yourself. Autosuggestion is the telegraph line, so to speak, over which you may register in your subconscious mind a description or plan of that which you wish to create or acquire in physical form. It is a process you can easily learn to use. The subconscious mind is the intermediary between the conscious thinking mind and infinite intelligence and you can invoke the aid of infinite intelligence only through the medium of the subconscious mind by giving it clear instructions as to what you want. Here you become familiar with the psychological reason for a definite chief aim. If you have not already seen the importance of creating a definite chief aim as the object of your life work, you will undoubtedly do so before this lesson shall have been mastered. Knowing from my own experience as a beginner in the study of this and related subjects how little I understood such terms as subconscious mind and autosuggestion and creative thought, I have taken the liberty throughout this course of describing these terms through every conceivable simile and illustration, with the object of making their meaning and the method of their application so clear that no student of this course can possibly fail to understand. That of their application so clear that no student of this course can possibly fail to understand. This accounts for the repetition of terms which you will observe throughout the course, and at the same time serves as an apology to those students who have already advanced far enough to grasp the meaning of much that the beginner will not understand at first reading. The subconscious mind has one outstanding characteristic to which I will now direct your attention. Namely, it records the suggestions which you send it through autosuggestion and invokes the aid of infinite intelligence in translating these suggestions into their natural physical form through natural means which are in no way out of the ordinary. It is important that you understand the foregoing sentence, for if you fail to understand it, you are likely to fail also to understand the importance of the very foundation upon which this entire course is built. That foundation being the principle of infinite intelligence which may be reached and appropriated at will through aid of the law of the master mind described in the introductory lesson. Study carefully, thoughtfully, and with meditation the entire preceding paragraph. The subconscious mind has another outstanding characteristic. It accepts and acts upon all suggestions that reach it, whether they are constructive or destructive, and whether they come from the outside or from your own conscious mind. You can see, therefore, how essential it is for you to observe the law of evidence and carefully follow the principles laid down in the beginning of this lesson in the selection of that which you will pass on to your subconscious mind through autosuggestion. You can see why one must search diligently for facts and why one cannot afford to lend a receptive ear to the slanderer and the scandalmonger for to do so is the equivalent of feeding the subconscious mind with food that is poison and ruinous to creative thought. The subconscious mind must be likened to the sensitive plate of a camera on which the picture of any object placed before the camera will be recorded. The plate of the camera does not choose the sort of picture to be recorded on it. It records anything which reaches it through the lens. The conscious mind may be likened to the shutter, which shuts off the light from the sensitized plate, permitting nothing to reach the plate for record except that which the operator wishes to reach it. 
the lens of the camera may be likened to auto-suggestion, for it is the medium which carries the image of the object to be registered to the sensitized plate of the camera. And infinite intelligence may be likened to the one who develops the sensitized plate after a picture has been recorded on it, thus bringing the picture into physical reality. The ordinary camera is a splendid instrument with which to compare the whole process of creative thought. First comes the selection of the object to be exposed before the camera. This represents one's definite chief aim in life. Then comes the actual operation of recording a clear outline of that purpose through the lens of autosuggestion on the sensitized plate of the subconscious mind. Here, infinite intelligence steps in and develops the outline of that purpose in a physical form appropriate to the nature of the purpose. The part which you must play is clear. You select the picture to be recorded, definite chief aim. Then you fix your conscious mind upon this purpose with such intensity that it communicates with the subconscious mind through auto-suggestion and registers that picture. You then begin to watch for and to expect manifestations of the physical realization of the subject of that picture. Bear in mind the fact that you do not sit down and wait, nor do you go to bed and sleep with the expectation of awakening to find that infinite intelligence has showered you with the object of your definite chief aim. You go right ahead in the usual way, doing your daily work in accordance with the instructions laid down in Lesson 9 of this course, with full faith and confidence that natural ways and means for the attainment of the object of your definite purpose will open to you at the proper time and in a suitable manner. The way may not open suddenly from the first step to the last, but it may open one step at a time. Therefore, when you are conscious of an opportunity to take the first step, Take it without hesitation, and do the same when the second, and the third, and all subsequent steps, essential for the attainment of the object of your definite chief aim, are manifested to you. Infinite intelligence will not build you a home and deliver that home to you ready to enter, but infinite intelligence will open the way and provide the necessary means with which you may build your own house. Infinite intelligence will not command the cashier of your bank to place a definite sum of money to your credit just because you suggested this to your subconscious mind. But infinite intelligence will open to you the way in which you may earn or borrow that money and place it to your own credit. Infinite intelligence will not throw out the present incumbent of the White House and make you president in his place. But infinite intelligence would most likely proceed under the proper circumstances, to influence you to prepare yourself to fill that position with credit and then help you to attain it through the regular method of procedure. Do not rely upon the performance of miracles for the attainment of the object of your definite chief aim. Rely upon the power of infinite intelligence to guide you through natural channels and with the aid of natural laws for its attainment. Do not expect infinite intelligence to bring to you the object of your definite chief aim. Instead, expect infinite intelligence to direct you toward that object. As a beginner, do not expect infinite intelligence to move quickly in your behalf. But as you become more adept in the use of the principle of autosuggestion, and as you develop the faith and understanding required for its quick realization, you can create a definite chief aim and witness its immediate translation into physical reality. You did not walk the first time you tried, but now, as an adult, an adept at walking, you walk without effort. You also look down at the little child as it wobbles around, trying to walk, and laugh at its efforts. As a beginner in the use of creative thought, you may be compared to the little child who is learning to take its first step. I have the best of reasons for knowing that this comparison is accurate, but I will not state them. I will let you find out your own reason in your own way. Keep in mind always the principle of evolution through the operation of which everything physical is eternally reaching upward and trying to complete the cycle between finite and infinite intelligences. Man himself is the highest and most noteworthy example of the working of the principle of evolution. First we find him down in the minerals of the earth, where there is life but no intelligence. Next we find him raised through the growth of vegetation, evolution, 
to a much higher form of life where he enjoys sufficient intelligence to feed himself. Next, we find him functioning in the animal period, where he has a comparatively high degree of intelligence, with ability to move around from place to place. Lastly, we find him risen above the lower species of the animal kingdom, to where he functions as a thinking entity, with ability to appropriate and use infinite intelligence.